circuit breakers comes with different classes we have electrical endurance class we have capacitor switching class then there is mechanical endurance class and we also have specific system application class some of these classes you will also find mentioned on the nameplate of circuit breaker in this video we are going to talk about these classes now before we jump in into the different classes let us understand why there are different classes mentioned by different standards of circuit breaker these different classes basically represents the capability of the breaker to sustain with some particular application. So for example, if I take the example of uh, mechanical endurance class, if I say my circuit breaker is M2 class, that means my circuit breaker is capable of performing 10,000 no load operations without requiring any major maintenance. Like that, there are other classes which defines the suitability of the breaker for different application. Let me quickly give you one simple example. Nowadays, the IP ratings are getting famous because every mobile devices are now coming up with some different IP ratings. Now, the mobile phone with IP67 rating will be superior compared to the IP55 rating of the other device. Why? Because for IP67, the mobile was tested for some intense testing. And as a result, it has received the IP67 rating and it, its capabilities are superior compared to the IP55. Similarly, the different classes of circuit breaker represents the superiority of the breaker, suitability of the breaker for different application. Now, let us talk and understand about each of the class here. First, let us start with the electrical endurance class. Now, if you look at the meaning of the words, now what does the word endurance mean? In a simple language, it means the capability of something to sustain the hardness, the hardship or the adversity or the adverse condition. So when we say electrical endurance, we mean that the capability of my product to sustain the different electrical loads or different electrical situation or different electrical stresses. Short circuit is one of the example of that. And electrical endurance class defines the capability of my breaker to sustain the different electrical uh, stresses that are there in the system. So the first class is E1 class. Now the circuit breaker with E1 class represent that the interrupter portion of the circuit breaker needs some sort of a maintenance during its life cycle. The IEC simply says the breaker that do not qualify for E2 class will fall under the E1 class. Now, the you, you must understand the rationale behind defining the electrical endurance class. In the starting years of circuit breaker, the breaker needed regular maintenance including the interrupter part and that's when the electrical endurance class was defined. So E1 class indicates that the breaker needs to have regular maintenance on the interrupter part maybe the contacts need maintenance uh, something like that so that is the even class the second uh, class that is there in electrical endurance is e2 class which is extended electrical endurance class in this class the breakers do not need any sort of maintenance on the interrupter throughout its life cycle so if i say my circuit breakers life is 20 years then for 20 years there won't be any maintenance required on the interrupter part of my breaker yes of course some basic maintenance activities like cleaning and stuff is still allowed maybe if your the breaker is gas filled then you can still uh, fill the gas in case of leakage that is all allowed but there is no major maintenance required and that class is the e2 class which is extended electrical endurance class and of course for that uh, there is some sort of testing uh, that I have to perform without doing the maintenance so that is electrical endurance class now there is one important point you must note here that e2 class e1 or e2 class is only limited to circuit breaker from 1 kilo volts to 52 kilo volts that means the distribution train this endurance class electrical endurance is not applicable for high and extra high voltage circuit breakers only limited up to 52 kilo volts very important keep that thing in mind by the way if you want to learn the electrical schematics of the circuit breaker then you must check out my course on circuit breaker control schematics 
the course is very easy to understand and you will be learning a to z about the secondary uh, secondary control schematics of circuit breaker there are already a lot of student in this uh, course from 10 to 12 different countries and it is super helpful if you want to learn the control schematics of circuit breaker i'll provide link for it down in the description you can go and check it out for more details now moving on the second type of class that we have that is capacitor switching class or the capacitor breaking class now when we see switch the capacitive load or the inductive load it is different than that of the resistive load why because in capacitive or inductive loads the voltage and current are not in phase with each other there is a 90 degree phase angle difference between the two and hence when voltage is zero your current will be maximum and when current is zero the voltage will be maximum and it becomes really tricky or tough to switch that type of load and the breaker in such case there is a possibility that while switching the capacitive load it may restrike and the capacitive switching class talks about that particular thing of circuit breaker so there are again two classes uh, de defined by IEC now IEC that we are taking the reference uh, here is IEC 62271-100 which is specific to the circuit breakers now it has defined two different classes for capacitor switching one is C1 class which indicates that the circuit breaker with C1 class is having low possibility of switching or restriking during the capacitive current breaking that is one then there is c2 class as well which defines it the breaker will have very low possibility of restriking during the capacitive switching so for sure c2 class is the superior class uh, when we compare with the c1 and of course again there are some sort of testing that needs to be done and in that testing uh, the classes are assigned to the circuit breaker so that is capacitor switching class now moving on to the next class that we have is the mechanical endurance class now we talked about the electrical endurance the electrical capability of the circuit breaker now it is also equally important to test the mechanical endurance the mechanical hardness the mechanical strength of the breaker to sustain the adverse conditions because a circuit breaker is more sort of a mechanical device than an electrical device so in this particular class this mechanical strength of the breaker is tested the mechanical endurance of the breaker is tested so there are two classes that is defined in this that is one is m1 class in this uh, we need to perform 2000 no load operations and during these 2000 operations no major maintenance of the circuit breaker is allowed so that is m1 class there is another class which is m2 class which is called as the extended mechanical endurance class it is the class in which we will be testing the breaker for 10,000 no load operations again no major maintenance is allowed during this testing you can do small small maintenance maybe like greasing and stuff but no major maintenance is allowed so for sure m2 is the superior class than the m1 class now moving on to the last one and that is the specific system application class now circuit breaker can be used in the cable system where there is a cable network or maybe the line network now in both the scenarios it uh, gives you a different transient recovery voltage across the circuit breaker the cable system will give differently uh, and the uh, line system will give differently the differentiation the different values are defined by the IEC standard and based on this application there are two different classes of circuit breaker the S1 class is indicate that the breaker is suitable for the cable network that we have and then we have S2 class which indicates the breaker is suitable for line network that we have again very important to note this class is only applicable for breaker 100 kilo volts and smaller not applicable for high and extra high voltage circuit breaker as defined by the IEC so those were the four different classes we talked about electrical endurance we talked about capacitor switching classes then the mechanical endurance class and the specific uh, application class those are the different uh, classes of circuit breaker i hope you got the idea about these different classes 
If this video was helpful, then do like the video and do share it with the people you think might be interested in knowing. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I'll see you in my next one. But till then, keep watching, keep learning.